Well, new at nine tonight, we're taking a look at where your money is going, and we found out a big chunk of it is going right into the ground in the form of multi-million dollar athletics fields. You've probably seen some of them at high schools across the state. It is a wish realized for many, but could some or all of that money be used for something else? We find out as we track your money. I'm not coaching anymore, so you know I don't get a chance to reap the benefits. But you know, for our kids, I mean, it's just dream come true. For Farrington High School, that dream has been 80 years in the making. Since the campus was founded in 1936, the governors have never enjoyed a single varsity football game at home. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things that we had to deal with, and you know, and and the the field was in such terrible shape the last 10 years, and. You know, we brought people in to kind of work on it, but it was just, it had so much use that we just couldn't get the field back to, you know, a safe, safe environment. But that all changes next month when contractors are expected to formally hand the field over to the school. This is like, again, this is for the community. You know, it's not only for Farrington football. You know, we we're looking at this for our community to use, to help, you know, to help, you know, we can host events for our community and our school, you know, and... That, that's something that we want to share with everyone in Kali. I found out over the past four years, similar athletics facilities have been constructed or in the process of being built at seven different schools, ranging in price from just under $4 million to as much as $9.4 million. You look at some of the hot button issues, uh, overcrowding at Campbell, air conditioning has been a very critical issue. And then people say, why are we spending three, five, six, eight million dollars on a facility like this? Right. And they, they are critical, but I would also argue that, again, athletic facilities are, are, are an integral part of that whole learning experience and a, a very important part of it. So a field like this for one, the school, but also the community, again, makes sense. Assistant Superintendent of Schools Dan Carlson also points out the majority of these facilities, including the new track and field currently under construction at McKinley High School, were the result of legislative appropriations that are completely separate from the overall Department of Education budget. If a project is, again, line item appropriated to us to, to do that project, I cannot reallocate that money and, and, and put it into a different, uh, different project without going to the ledge and getting approval. But uh, again, that, that's few and far between does that happen. And when you're the principal of a school and the DOE comes to you and says there's been an appropriation to build something like this on your campus, mm -hmm. Certainly, you're not going to say no, true? Oh, definitely. When you walk into a campus and the campus breeds a life of, you know, wow. You know, I, I guess that's the only word you can say it. It sends a message throughout the whole school climate. You know, kid, the students want to be here because it's a sense of pride. Beautiful campus, beautiful facilities. Like his counterparts at Farrington High School, McKinley High School principal Ron Okamura is excited for what the future might bring and says his new facility is much more than just a football field. No, it, it's about community, and I think um, as, as a whole. Okamura says he looks forward to sharing the new facility that serves as the perfect bookend to the state's second oldest school, one that celebrated its 150th anniversary just last year. It's a good dichotomy that, you know, from the front, when you're looking, you get the historical piece, but then when you drive around the back and you're surrounded by the upcoming, you know, um, high-rises around here, kind of fits into the motif of going to the 21st, 22nd century. So the field itself represents the future for our school. But despite a sense of history and excitement, Okamura also understands not everybody might see this as a field of dreams. Well, I think, I think there is some, uh, sometimes some resentment that, you know, how come, you know, money could have gone someplace else, you know, facil other facilities, um, classroom supplies. But how the DOE works, and as far as the budget is concerned, that there is a pot of money that's set aside for different projects, uh, capital improvement projects throughout the school. Like every other school across the state, McKinley has a master plan to be developed in increments. Part of the plan includes sharing the new facilities with other schools and with the community. And there are even plans to monetize the facilities by renting them out to visiting teams. But one thing you just cannot put a price tag on? You walk out here onto this field, you see this logo. Um, I imagine this is a great source of pride. Oh, uh, most definitely. You see, when our students see it, you know, from driving around the road and walking past, they said they kind of wait to get on this field, and you know, because it represents, you know, McKinley High School. And it's a beautiful field.
Couple items of note regarding these new fields because they still require regular maintenance. They may save a little bit of money over the long run, but they're not going to pay for themselves over their seven to ten year life expectancy. Then the safety issue. While many coaches, athletics directors, doctors agree that a good natural surface is best, it's also widely agreed upon that a good artificial field is better and safer than a bad and compacted natural plane surface.